Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to go over the steps that I take to prepare a final logo package after I've received that approval from the client. I've discovered a method using Adobe Illustrator that allows me to prep logos for web, print, vector, in various color formats. It's very quick and streamlined. It takes me about all of 15 minutes. So stay tuned for that and leave a comment below if you have any questions. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up art boards for each of these. So I'm gonna use the art board tool here. They don't have to be too large, so I'm gonna go with something that's like four by four for this little square guy. So I'm gonna make a copy of this. So you actually won't be able to see the white, so it's a little confusing, but these ones I'm gonna save as PNGs for the client. So it has a transparent background. Um, people generally like these because they can go into apps like Canva and just throw it on images themselves. So it's handy for them to have. So I'm just gonna make this fill up a lot of the artboard. I'm gonna make a copy by holding shift and option so that it like is in line and makes a copy. And I'm going to turn this to all white. To bring up this little dropper, you can just click I, the I button on your keyboard, like, like the letter I. Now I'm going to give them an entirely black version. So I'm just gonna eye drop that. And I'm also going to provide an option that is like this main one here where the shovel and the little rake is green and so is the word farm. So I'm gonna select that, take farm, sample that. Oopsies, well, I guess it doesn't matter. Redo there. So now they've got four different versions of this logo. One that's all white, one that's white and green, black and green, and entirely black. Oh, is there another one I could give? Maybe I'm going to do one more where it's black and white so they can use it on a green background. So I'm going to take this one, make a copy, and take everything that's green and switch it to white. So now they've got five versions of their submark. I'm going to do that again with the main logo. If you hear any random noises throughout this video, that would be my cat, Charles. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is create a similar sized artboard. But this time it's gonna be a little wider. Get away from there. Delete the old logo that's in there. I'm gonna start with this main logo. So I'm gonna make a copy, bring it over, and try and make this fill up as much as the frame as possible. And then I'm gonna adjust the frame to, to fit, because this is the one I'm gonna be duplicating, so I just want it to have a nice snug fit. Perfect, now I'm just going to basically use the versions I created up here this below the same one and then I'm just gonna go ahead and redo that again so what I'm gonna do is just pull all my artboards out to start since I already have this function open oh no this one's a little too close so I'm going to move it oops some of my objects are locked so I'm gonna unlock them over so that I can have room for this one. Okay, so I know first one I need is a green and a white version, so selecting all the black. I'm going to change that to white. So now that I've got all my artboards built out, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this because the client has already seen this. They, that's what they approved it from. So I don't need it when I'm saving up my final files. The reason why I do it this way in Illustrator with multiple artboards is because you can go ahead 
and save them all at once. So I don't have to create multiple files to have this whole logo lockup. I can simply export all and then create my various versions. So again, I'm gonna save them ones with transparent backgrounds so that they can use them on top of photos as like little like watermarks, if you will. Um, I'm gonna give them JPEGs that are optimized for web. So those will be saved in RGB. Um, I'll save them a version that is CMYK so that they can use that for printing. And then I'll also save an EPS file of each of these uh, should they need it for um, supplying to a printer. So to do that, it's actually really simple. Uh, Illustrator has this awesome new function. Um, you go ex export and export for screens. So as you can see here, I have all my artboards for all the various logos. I'm gonna make sure all is selected. Um, I'm gonna do it at one times the scale just because I don't need them any larger than what I set up. But you can also go ahead and add in another scale. So what I'm gonna do here is keep it at one time, but I'm gonna actually have it as a PNG. So um, it's gonna work for creating transparent backgrounds and I can do it all in one go. So I'm gonna create a total of 20 files right here. Um, you can name these any with a prefix. I'm just gonna put kitchen garden farms. And then you can just create, uh, select where you want these to save. So I'm just gonna save it into their folder I had started under finals. So, export artboards, and boom. Now I've created all these versions of her logo for web. So what I'm gonna do is name these web, because the save, the, the export for screens function is RGB files. So you're saving these for use on the web. I'll show you how to do that again um, for the print files. So I'm just gonna go check my work. Um, and there's actually a couple in here that will have been created that are kind of useless. So what I'm gonna do is sort by kind because you don't need JPEGs of the white versions because as you can see, it just turns out to be all white. So I'm deleting any white versions of the JPEGs. Just hitting spacebar to check these out. And then those are the transparent ones. So as you can see, these are actually like fairly small, so they're good for web use. But I'm also going to save her another batch that are a bit larger. So it's really easy to do, so I'm gonna label these small. Because the, the idea for web is to keep the file size down. You don't want to be loading massive um, file sizes. So these are all nice and small, like that's only 10 kilobytes. But again, when you open it, that's it at full scale. So, I mean, it's fairly small. So I want to give her some options for some larger ones. So I put those into the small folder. And I'm just going to go ahead and do that again. Export for screens. And I'm just going to change the scale this time to three times. I just really want her to have large versions of the file to use, um, just not have to continuously come back to me and ask for you know, large files or like claiming they're pixelated. So I just really want to set them up with everything from the get-go. So I'm gonna go and maybe change this to large and it's in the same spot. So I'm gonna export those. So I'm gonna move those into my web folder again. And as you can see, I've got my small ones. I'm going to relabel these as large. And I'm going to go back and erase the white ones again. There, so now she has a couple of web ready versions JPEG PNGs that are much larger. So now that I've done my web versions, I'm going to save her print files. And to do that, I'm going to export 
as I'm going to click the use artboard function make sure I'm back in my finals print um, so first I'm going to start with the PNGs so I'm going to just label these here kitchen garden farm print and then I'm going to export those so here's where you could um, drill down on the options. So for this one, I'm going to give her 300 PPI because I want them to be very high res. These aren't going to be shared online for her. Maybe she's gonna make a poster that she's gonna print. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm just gonna save her very high res versions of these logos. And I'm gonna hit okay. So now I'm just gonna check my work and here are all the large 300 dpi print ones. And I'm just going to give her large versions of those because if you're printing it, it doesn't really matter the size, you can scale it up or down. So personally, I don't feel like there's a need to save smaller versions because again, they're not being shared online. So it doesn't really matter what the size of these files are. So I'm going to do the same thing, export, and give her the JPEG versions. It's just nice to supply both. Maybe people don't want every don't want a version with transparent backgrounds. So I'm just gonna give her another option with JPEGs. So I'm gonna use the artboard and I'm gonna export it. So here you can see where you can ensure that you're selecting CMYK. We're going to make sure the resolution is 300 because these are for print and I'm going to hit OK again. So now I'm going to do the same thing I did last time, just remove any white versions because they are not needed. And my cat is bothering me again. Surprise, surprise. If I don't give him attention all the time, he just starts scratching on everything around me. He'll probably hear it. Hey, stop it. Ignore that. So here I am, again, just deleting the white versions because on a JPEG, as you can tell, you don't really need them. So I've got her black, the two color, the all black submark, and the two color submark. So now we've got all our print files ready. The last thing we're going to do is save out her vector files. So this one's pretty simple. I'm just going to uh, click file and save as. Charles, stop it. Um, go back to where I was working, click vector, and I'm going to name these vector. I'm going to drop down to EPS, use art boards, and save all. So I just keep these settings the same, 2020 EPS, and save. This one might take a bit longer. There we go. Let's go check my work. Um, what it does is it will always create one file that has every single one on the same like kind of file so i just delete that um, i want her to have the options so what i might also do is go in and rename these because um, if you're not a designer or someone who works with the adobe software you're actually not going to be able to preview these so I want to ensure that my client is sending the right one to the printer without having to do any guesswork. So I'll just rename these quickly. So this one is I won't bore you by renaming all these, but you get the idea. So now that I have all the files nicely organized, I would just create a zip folder for her. So you compress them. Kitchen garden farm finals. Oh. And then I would just send her that. So it's 15 megs. I might have to do it using Dropbox or Google Drive. But yeah, that's all there is to it. Hope that helped.